Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, I will be covering the lingering snowstorm across the Northeast that brought up to three feet of snow reported, and then a significant severe weather episode likely across the Southern Plains as we go into tomorrow on Thursday, March 16th. And then another drenching storm is possible for the West Coast as we go into early next week. We'll get into all those details later on in this video. If you guys are not subscribed, to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on all of my daily weather forecast updates each and every morning at 9 a.m. on this channel. I cover Canada, the United States, and the tropics during tropical weather season. So hit the subscribe button down below, everyone. Definitely much appreciated. Also hit the like button down below, the thumbs up button. It helps to get all of this weather information out to as many people as possible. And I definitely appreciate all the likes out there. But going across the Northeast with that major nor'easter that did occur across the Northeast and is still wrapping up here as we go through the day today, just the past 24 hours with our snowfall accumulation, we saw lots of areas here in the maroon reds getting over 12 inches of snow into eastern New York State, much of central southern Vermont, New Hampshire, much of central and western Massachusetts, and even northwestern Connecticut seeing that as well, and even some embedded areas here into southern Vermont, southern portions in New Hampshire into western Massachusetts that did see up to three feet of snowfall over the past 24 hours. And going through the day today, we still have those winter weather advisories in the purple and the pink shaded areas from coastal Maine back through Vermont, New Hampshire, and eastern New York State here. Those are winter storm warnings where we still have some lingering snow going through the morning hours. You can see some lighter snow showers here going through the noon time frame across mainly the state line there between Vermont and and New, Ham uh, New Hampshire, coastal Maine, we still could be seeing some snow here just to the south of the Caribou region. Other than that, we're still going to be seeing lots of wind before this starts to wrap up going through the middle evening hours tonight at 9 p.m. Looking at any additional snowfall accumulations with this storm going through Thursday morning, maybe a couple more inches of snow with this along that state line between Vermont and New Hampshire, maybe another inch or two up here into coastal Maine and northern portions of Maine, and that is about it going through the Thursday morning time frame. We will, however, still see some very strong wind gusts, so even though the snow has ended, we are going to still see those gusty winds out of the north and northeast with this system here gusting over 30 35, if not 40 miles per hour across much of interior New England, especially centered on western Massachusetts, going through the evening hours here tonight. So definitely uh, a little bit of a windy day out there going through the day today. So definitely be mindful of that. And with some of those stronger winds, even though we did have a wet snow uh, pack on the ground with the snow being very slushy, I do still think that we're going to have some travel impacts, at least some limited to minor travel impacts, especially up here into Maine as we go through the day today with those strong gusty winds kind of blowing some of the snow around at times. So definitely be mindful of that and the visibility restrictions that could bring across the Northeast. But farther to the south from there, we have widespread freeze warnings here across portions of the southeast the stretches from Arkansas all the way across to the Carolinas here much of the southeastern states are uh, below freezing here this morning these are your low temperatures this morning on Wednesday March 15th and you see down here into much of middle eastern Tennessee we are in the middle to upper 20s farther south from there into northern Mississippi north central Alabama north central portions of Georgia and the Carolinas as well we are down into the lower 30s respectively, and that's actually down into the Birmingham, Tuscaloosa region, the Atlanta metro, and even over here into Columbia, South Carolina. So definitely some very respectable freezing temperatures this morning. But we will rebound. This afternoon, temperatures will be rebounding here into the middle 50s and even upper 50s down here across the deep south. So that those freezing temperatures won't last too long. And a matter of fact, going through the day today, we actually will be warming up in a big way across the Great Plains, and this is ahead of our next storm system kicking out across the West Coast here and into the Rockies today. We'll see temperatures rising into the 60s, 70s, if not lower 80s as we go farther south into West Texas and the Panhandle of Texas, so definitely enjoy a nice spring preview of temperatures, but farther to the north across portions of North Dakota into Montana, temperatures will be held down into the 20s today with that deeper snowpack farther up towards the north. So our next storm system 
system we're watching is starting to take shape across the inner mountain west and the Rockies going through today. We got the snow farther north where we got those 20s and 30s, those colder temperatures, especially in the higher elevations of the north central Rockies. But underneath that, down toward Arizona, portions there of western New Mexico will start to see some warmer temperatures and thus more rainfall down in those areas. And could be some pretty respectable rainfall totals down into places like Phoenix, Flagstaff, and around those areas going through today. In fact, looking at some of the rainfall totals down here into portions of southern Utah, much of north central Arizona into western New Mexico, anywhere you see these darker greens or lighter blues, that's at least a half inch to an inch worth of rain and I couldn't even rule out up to two inches of rain in some of the higher elevations here into northern portions of Arizona so definitely something to monitor and that is why the Weather Prediction Center has issued a slight risk for flash flooding across northwestern Arizona just to the north of the Phoenix Glendale area as we go through the day today and into Thursday morning. So definitely lots of runoff with some of the heavy rain and some of this uh, hilly terrain through here across portions of the desert southwest. But farther to the north with the uh, colder temperatures in the 20s and 30s, we will see snow, especially in the higher elevations up here into Montana, western and central portions of North Dakota, down into western uh, Wyoming, eastern portions of Idaho, down in toward the Salt Lake City area there in Utah, and western portions of Colorado, a lot of those areas will see several inches of snow accumulation with the highest of the elevation seeing over a foot of snow just up there toward portions of the Salt Lake City region. And then moving farther to the east on Thursday, we go with this low pressure system. We'll have a surface low up here toward the upper Midwest, toward northeast Iowa, southwestern Wisconsin. On the cold side, we will see a band of some heavy snow potentially setting up from the UP of Michigan down through northern central Wisconsin and then down into western Iowa but on the warm side, we are going to be seeing all rain. So it's all rain for you up here into Michigan, southeast Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, farther down to the south here, all the way down into Texas. That is all rain and even some severe weather breaking out as well. But before we get to that, this will be producing some heavy rainfall. So make no mistake about it. Not only will we be seeing some heavy rain across the Midwest, places like Milwaukee, Chicago, Indianapolis, with rainfall totals over a half an inch Thursday into Friday, but farther south and west from there into the Arquitex and Arklamis regions here, we are going to definitely be seeing those one to three inch rainfall amounts. This covers the Little Rock area, Shreveport, Tyler, Texas, and then over here toward the Jackson, Mississippi region Thursday into Friday with that heavy rain setup. And that's why the Weather Prediction Center has a more widespread area for flash flooding into East Texas, Southern Arkansas, and North Central Louisiana Thursday into Friday. Maybe some scattered flash flooding events across these areas, but we're more concerned about a severe weather outbreak possible into Thursday afternoon and more so into Thursday evening. The Storm Prediction Center has upgraded parts of North Texas into southeastern Oklahoma and extreme southwestern portions of Arkansas to a level three, an enhanced risk on the scale that goes all the way to five. So this is a pretty decent threat for severe weather. And then a larger slight risk extends down into south central Texas, northwestern Louisiana, and then ever so slightly closer toward the Little Rock region getting in towards the day on Thursday. Looking at the individual hazards and what these storms could bring, the damaging wind threat is there. We have a 30% chance of damaging winds within a 25 mile radius around portions of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, McKinney, Texas, and then on up toward the Texarkana region, maybe some 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts with this setup. And then some large hail, which could be significant here as the storms initiate toward the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex and the Red River here in the southern Oklahoma. They will initially develop as supercells, so we may have to watch out for that 30% hatched area for hail that could be over two inches in diameter. So we're talking about those golf ball size hailstones or larger down here going through that Thursday afternoon and evening time frame. And then, of course, we got that 2 to 5% shading for tornadoes with the highest threat for tornadoes across northeast Texas, southeastern Oklahoma, southwestern Arkansas, and then in over here into northwestern portions of Louisiana.
So let's look at the setup for the severe weather. Dew points out ahead of the cold front will be rising into the low and middle 60s out here, and that's a very sharp cold front right behind that front. Dew points will crash down into the 20s and 30s, so this is going to provide a lot of lift in which we'll see thunderstorms develop. And what else is what we're looking at here is the CAPE, the Convective Available Potential Energy. This is the energy needed for thunderstorm development and even severe thunderstorm development, and that is down across east central Texas in southeastern Oklahoma on Thursday afternoon. Some of these CAPE values will be up and over 2,000 joules per kilogram, more than enough needed for severe thunderstorms. And also looking at the wind profile. So we have the 500 millibar mid-level jet stream here punching in from the west-southwest right over some of that energy. So we definitely have to be concerned about some damaging winds and some tornadoes, especially when combined with a decent low-level jet here kind of veering more to the south and west. So we have a little bit more of turning of the winds with height than we saw yesterday with this setup. So that is more concerning for at least a few tornadoes down here into north Texas, northeast Texas. Texas and then down across the Arklatex going through Thursday evening. So finally now, let's look at the initiation for these storms. Right now, it looks like a noon time frame. We could have a few isolated storms trying to pop up, but the main cold front is back here across western Oklahoma into the panhandle of Texas by noon time frame on Thursday. That finally reaches toward the Red River by the time we get into mid-afternoon. Peak daytime heating on Thursday will initiate some isolated to widely scattered supercells, and these could be the ones to produce some very large hail. Those hailstones could be over two inches in diameter. Of course, maybe even some tornadoes and some uh, damaging winds over 60 miles per hour as well. We might have to watch some prefrontal storms as well ahead of the main line of storms as we go into 3 o'clock down here into East Texas. Those could be severe. And then the main front will drop through the DFW Metroplex and Texarkana by the time we get through 9 o'clock on Thursday evening, transitioning more to a linear line of storms, which would could be producing more of a widespread damaging wind threat and heavy rain threat as it drops to the south but we still have to watch the kinks in this line on the leading edge for some brief weak tornadoes and then that will drop farther south again we'll have a pretty strong outflow boundary with this system as it drops toward the Houston Metroplex down here and towards San Antonio Austin and then getting into northern portions of Louisiana towards Shreveport and the Baton Rouge region as well by 3 a.m. on Friday that will drop even further south towards the immediate Gulf Coast here by the time we get to 7 a.m. on Friday morning Looking at the temperatures Thursday afternoon down here with the passage of the cold front, temperatures ahead of the front again will be in the 70s and 80s, especially into central Texas into the lower 80s there Thursday afternoon. And you can see behind the front, we're in the 40s up here into southern Kansas, much of western and central Oklahoma, and the panhandle of Texas. And once that front passes by Friday morning, we are going to have a shock to the system type of weather pattern here, where we are going to be down into the upper 30s waking up in the DFW Metroplex by Friday. And that is after we see highs in the middle to upper 70s on Thursday afternoon, even some 20s up here farther to the north into the panhandle of Texas and much of Kansas and Oklahoma. So definitely a shock to the system on Friday morning. Farther to the north, talk about a shock to the system. We got more snowfall here, and we have that moving in across Nebraska into northwestern Kansas by 6 a.m. on Thursday. Decent banding here with some of the snow, maybe an inch per hour at times. That will be pushing across western Iowa toward the Omaha region, just west of Des Moines here, and then up toward the Twin Cities and into the north woods of Wisconsin by mid-afternoon on Thursday at 3 o'clock. That will spread more into the UP of Michigan, again, northern Wisconsin, the Arrowhead of Minnesota, and then even into southeastern Canada and Ontario by the time we get into 10 p.m. on Thursday evening. You can see farther south, it's all rainfall, so Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit, Indianapolis, all you guys down here into the Ohio Valley in the lower Midwest will be all rainfall through Thursday evening. And the same, thing hold, uh, the same thing holds true on Friday morning at 6 a.m. with more of that snow into Canada here and the UP of Michigan and all rain to the Ohio Valley and down towards Detroit by that time frame. So looking at the total snowfall accumulation from Thursday into Friday with this system, this is on the 16th and 17th here. We definitely see some decent 1 to 3 inch snowfall amounts here as you get closer to Lake Superior up into northern Wisconsin and near Duluth, Minnesota and into the western UP of Michigan, we could be seeing more enhanced 
chance totals with some lake effect snow, potentially up to around three to six inches or more here. So that's something we'll be able to watch out for. And then that cold front and that system will slowly start to push to the east on Friday. Again, rain all the way from the mid-Atlantic down through the Gulf Coast. The snow will stay up across the upper Great Lakes here. Maybe a little bit of a mix of rain and snow with some sleet mixed in across northern lower Michigan on Friday. And then that system clears the east coast by Saturday afternoon with still some lingering snow across the Great Lakes during that time frame. But it will be producing more heavy rain on Friday. So Friday into Saturday, some decent rains down here across the southeast. And we've seen a lot of rain events down here in recent memory. So again, this shouldn't be anything new, just more heavy rain going through the Atlanta metro area, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, down here toward the New Orleans region, and even Tallahassee, Florida as well going through the early portion of this weekend widespread one to two inches of rain lighter amounts up here into the mid-atlantic and the northeast with these lighter greens generally around a quarter to half an inch up here and the snowfall farther to the north across ontario western quebec and the upper great lakes especially with some enhancement to the lake effect snow we definitely could be seeing over six inches of snow falling there into eastern ontario and western portions of quebec friday into saturday this upcoming weekend but the long range weather pattern still remains cold, especially out west here and across the southern United States with those below normal temperature anomalies provided by us here with the Climate Prediction Center's outlook. Again, with another trough digging down across the west next week, and that looks to continue through the end of March, at least through the 28th time frame, with much of the below normal temperatures across the middle and western two-thirds of the country going through that time frame. And you can see it here with the temperature anomalies starting next week on Monday, March 20th. 20th, a lot of these areas, especially the Texas and New Mexico, will be a good 20 to 25 degrees below average with our temperatures. And that goes along with most of the lower 48 in southeastern Canada that will generally be at least 5 to 10 degrees below average going into early next week. And maybe some modifying air for the eastern two-thirds of the country with a little bit of a ridge that tries to come back by the middle of next week on Wednesday, March 22nd. But another trough will move in across the west and that will knock out the ridge farther east by the time we get into the middle of next week with a brand new storm system. And you can see that reflected on the Climate Prediction Center's precipitation outlook. Again, well above average precipitation out here across the West Coast, especially California and Nevada, and then farther east into the eastern two-thirds of the country, at least slightly above average with our precipitation with our new storm system moving in again next week. And that really continues, especially across the West and even across the East Coast here with above average precipitation, most likely some rain, maybe some snow mixing in across the North getting toward the end of March on March 28th. And looking at this, it is drying up across California and the West Coast for now. This will go through late this week, but watch another period of active weather as another brief atmospheric river does start to move back in toward the early portion of next week. This will take us into Tuesday, March 21st, and actually the first full day of spring across much of California, Nevada, getting here through Utah, Arizona, and western portions of New Mexico as well, with more precipitation across those areas getting in towards the early and middle portion of next week. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. If you guys like the video, press the thumbs up down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. A great rest of your week, and I will see you all in the next video.